Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday, February 13, 2022. We are in the middle of Chennai Storytelling Festival 2022. And Renu, uh, I want to invite you to tell a story. Thank you very much for, for coming. So please uh, introduce yourself fully, tell us about your work, and uh, please tell us a story. Thank you, Eric. Wanakam, namaste. Very good morning to all of you. Good afternoon, good evening. To all of you who have joined us outside of India. Thank you very much, Eric, for giving us all this opportunity, this platform to listen and to be heard. All of us, sorry, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Renu Narayan. I'm a professional story. I live in Chennai. I have an initiative called Kata Viksh, which means story tree. I tell stories to children and to adults. I also curate a storytelling festival, which is my monthly. It's called Kata Potpuri. I have 12 tellers, few from India and few from overseas. So here's my story. All of us have heard of kingdoms ruled by monarchs, by emperors, by kings, by queens. Have you ever heard of a kingdom ruled by crows? I'm going to tell you such a story today. And the source of the story is here, my imagination. A long time ago, there used to be kingdoms of crows. There were four such kingdoms. In the lake region, the river region, the mountain region, and the forest region. Our story it revolves around the forest region. The kingdom was ruled by a king and a queen called Ka and Ki. They had only one child, Princess Kalli, and she was the apple of their eye. She had been blessed with all the qualities that a future queen should possess. She was kind, she was compassionate, she was a very good listener, and she mingled freely with all the young crows in the kingdom. What's more, she was blessed with a powerful voice. What's so special about a powerful voice? All crows do have loud voices, don't they? God, they go, right? And they wake us up sometimes from our sleep. But in the crow kingdoms, this was considered to be a gift. Every five years, there was a festival called the Crow Coin Festival. And anyone could participate, royals or subjects. And whoever won that title was called the queen or the king of the fest. And they could hold this title for five long years. Every crow wanted to win that title. And so and Kalvi was discovered with a powerful voice. Ka and Ki thought, our daughter could surely bring that title to our kingdom. And so Kalvi's training started. Queen Ki trained her herself because once upon a time, she had won the title. Kalvi was only too happy to practice with her mother. Every morning, the two of them would sit up high up on a tree and call. It was not just Kalvi who was being trained. All the other young crows who had talents too were also being trained. But when the competition at the kingdom level happened, it was Kalvi who won wings down. Everybody cheered for her. After all, she was everyone's darling, their favorite princess. The competition had been happening in all the other kingdoms as well. And soon it was time for the regional semi-finals. 12 crows participated. Crows from all the four regions had assembled in a particular arena. Round after round went on. And finally, it was just two who stood to participate in the finals. Kapila from the mountain region and Kalvi, of course, from the forest region. Kalvi went back home, very confident that she would win the title. There were six months left for the finals. And Queen Ki ensured that Kalvi continued to practice. And Kalvi did do that. One month went by, two months went by. 
Then one morning, Kalvi said to her mother, Ma, I think I'm done with practice. I know I have the most powerful voice. I know Kapila very well. Her voice can never match mine. I assure you, I will bring the Tai Chi home. Queen Ki looked at Kalvi and said, Kalvi, it's not about winning the competition or bringing the Tai Chi home. It's about you continuing to practice and make your, strong, your voice strong. It's not about winning. It's about being better than your best. Kalvi thought for a while and then she said, Ma, looks like you don't trust me. Don't you trust me? Kalvi, it's not about trusting you. I just want you to keep trying for your best. Ma, please leave me alone. And she flew away. Queen Ki sighed. But there was one characteristic in Kalvi. She was very, very strong-willed. So there's no winning an argument with her. The days went by, weeks went by, and the day of the festival arrived. The two friends, competitors now, sat on two trees facing each other. A leaf was tossed. Kalvi chose face down and the leaf did flutter down and fall face down. And so Kalvi started off first. She puffed out her chest, opened her beak wide and went, Kaw! and that was a powerful one. Kapila went next. And she caught two. But Kalvi's was more powerful. So the second round, Kalvi went very powerfully again. Kapila waited and then she too opened her beak. And this time, this time, her paw was so powerful that all the leaves on the trees shook and trembled. Kalvi was taken aback. She had not expected this. But she, though her confidence was a little shaken, she was still very sure she would win. The third and final round came about. This time, Kapila went first. She puffed out her chest, opened her beak wide. Go! It was really, really powerful. It was like the tree, the very tree on which they were sitting was shaken by that power behind that paw. Kalvi herself was shaken. What was happening? Would she win? But she decided, no, I will win. So she too puffed out her chest, opened her beak wide and she went, There was utter silence. Not a leaf moved, not a feather twitched. And Kalvi sat there, a range of emotions she experienced. Anger, disgust, disappointment, regret. She looked across at Kapila, but there was only compassion in Kapila's eyes. And that's when Kalvi had an epiphany. A realization struck her. She had lost the competition. Not today. She had lost it on that day when she had decided that her voice was the best. Her mother was right. There was always better than the best. And that's when Kalvi's transformation happened. And she flew across to Kapila put her wings around Kapila and said, congratulations, Kapila. And that's when the murder of crows burst into raucous calls. Everyone flew and celebrated and called to their heart's content. And Kalvi, with tears in her eyes, embraced her parents 
and her parents had never been as proud of their daughter as they were that day. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful story. What I what I get out of it is that we we need to practice every day, right? <laughs> we need to um, keep developing, keep working. Do, do, ha, tell us how you came to create this story. Was it uh, what what brought it to mind? Uh, Actually, maybe this became this came out of my own uh, self awareness. I've always gone through this whole, you know, being co constantly comparing myself to others and saying that you know I have to be better than this one or that one or you know I need to do this, I need to do that, or sometimes even feeling that I am better, you know, I'm very good at this. Sometimes there is a sense of overconfidence, but I think underlying that is a sense of lack of self worth. And as I've been working on myself, I realized that the competition is never external. The competition is always within ourselves, that the, there is always a chance of telling us we can be better than tomorrow. I can be better than what I am today. And not just in uh, terms of uh, our talents, but in terms of our persona, our, ourselves, the kind of people we are. That today I might be a little nasty to somebody, but there's always a chance for me to understand what have I done is what I've done is wrong. And then there's a chance, a new day, a new beginning for me to change myself, to change my attitude and say, yes, I was that person yesterday, but today I'm different and forgive myself for being that person yesterday. So I think that sense of forgiveness, so the, the transformation that Padvi I was talking about is she herself forgiving herself that, you know, she had thought that I'm like this. I didn't want to put too much into the telling because I want people to also reflect and think what did they get from that story? Because this is a story that has been uh, quite some time been buzz, bu buzzing in my head. And uh, this is only the second time I'm really actually sharing it to an audience. The first time I shared it to the small group and they really loved the story. And I worked on it a little bit more. And I know as I keep uh, creating and telling stories, I have to keep working on it. And each time a different version emerges, you know, and there are more learnings, more lessons. But this, since this is the very second time that I'm sharing the story, I feel there's a lot of work still needs to be done. Rachel? Thank you, Renu. Um, oh, sorry, is anybody else going? It's okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Reno. I wanted to say that such a so beautifully written story and you narrated it so well. Uh, I could resonate uh, so much with the story because as kids, right, I mean, uh, I remember my mom always telling me that, uh, you know, I used to get some marks and my mom used to tell me that you should like name the person who used to get first rank and tell you should get first rank like him. You know, that was a normal thing that all of us parents, like all of all of us have gone through, most of us. And, and you know, it has led us to compete with somebody else always, like keep them as an example, right? Only now when we grow up and kind of realize you tell the competition is really within you and, you know, you have to be better, like not compete with anybody else or compare uh, with anybody else. So that is so true. That is so true. And uh and giving being compassionate for yourself as you said that forgive yourself for what you've done earlier because it's not really a mistake and move forward uh, such a lovely story to start the morning with thank you thank you thank you i think that was the idea in my head because parents are constantly also making that mistake saying that's why kalvi's mother doesn't compare her she just says you need to be better than your best you know i didn't i wanted that message more for parents because we are constantly comparing our children right I mean, i have done that as a parent and i think that's the biggest mistake we can do as humans thank you shruti uh, rachel um, i also got from the story what everybody else is saying but what i particularly liked was that the parents were so proud of kalmi when she was able to acknowledge that her rival had actually deserved winning and was better than she was. And when she didn't allow that competition to ruin 
the friendship. So there's a grace and a graciousness in the way she went over and when the image of, of that she wrapped her wing around her friend was beautiful. And also, I when you said that that freed all of the other crows to celebrate, because if she had not been gracious, there would have been a strain in the whole group. So um, it was a lovely story, wonderfully told, and has a, has a number of different wonderful messages to it. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much. Sandhya? Hi, Renu. Hi. I loved your uh, crow like costume, first of all. <laughs> That's why I wore it. <laughs> yeah. And second, your creativity is amazing, superb as usual. I like this sentence there is always better than the best. When we often see people are winning certain titles in TVs or newspaper, uh, we say that I know somebody in my next door who is actually better than this. It can be a beauty pageant or it can be a sport event. We may find a local guy who is actually better than the one who is won uh, an international or national title. It often happens. So uh, from this story, the message I got is we have to be humble. The humility should always be there. You may win a competition doesn't mean that you are the best. There can always be somebody who is better than you. So thank you so much for this story, Renu. Thank you, Sandhya. Thank you, Renu, for this wonderful story. As usual, you rock. And I love the way you present your story and have a, I love your imagination. And of course, the hidden message behind the story is wonderful, Renu. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lalita. Hello, Renu. This is Lina here. Yes, yes. Hi. Uh, very nice. Uh, what I really appreciate is that uh, you have yourself written this story and children need to uh, listen to this message also that competition is not every, everything. And at times, you know, our uh, it becomes our need to get ahead of someone. Instead of cooperation, We our first default response becomes of competition to the presence. You know, sometimes if we just see someone can be a threat to my position, then it becomes a default response to withhold, withhold resources, help, and cooperation goes out of the window. So competition, if we really, really sit and think about it, it doesn't work. So it's very nice. I also would like that you mentioned compassion because, again, competition and compassion cannot coexist in one heart. So it either it is competition in our heart or it is compassion. So that I liked very much that, you know, everything came together very nicely in this story. And congratulations that you are telling it to children. They need to know it so that they can be their best. So maybe it's a wrong competition for someone as they say, okay, if you are judging a fish that you're not able to climb the tree. So it, it might just be a wrong competition and you shouldn't have won it in the first place. Yes. So when will it come out? Competition can't you know, get us to ourselves. So very nice and good luck for your future work. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Gayatri and Shri, and then we have to uh, proceed to the next storyteller. Yeah, you know, it was really wonderful. And I think I, I remember from childhood, I remember uh, listening to crow stories. Most of the moral stories were crow stories. And I think I have a new story now to tell the children. One more crow story. And I think crows are really wonderful. I love yes. crows. Same and sir. I love the newness, the articulation and the emotion you brought in the story and the little message of overconfidence also. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Renu, uh, when you initially said um, Kingdom of Crows, I thought it is Takulukyam from uh, Panchatantra, but then your own story, how beautifully it emerged. I agree with a lot of people who spoke before me, like Lena, it is for the children, but um, like Rachel, I say that it is for the parents too. 
uh, as parents we have the onus on us to cultivate uh, uh, values of empathy and compassion and uh, in the ending of your story when the parents hugged and that is what came across so beautifully that when parents appreciate such values in children instead of uh, pushing them to compete and all um, this is more <laughs> beautiful story for the parents uh, than children this is what as a parent i can uh, say beautiful story as always you wrote and wonderfully you narrated what a what a start to this sunday morning of tennis story telling festival lovely thank you so much thank you so much she thank you for all for being there also this morning thank you so much okay thank you very much renu my and pleasure